Hi everyone, welcome back. Thanks for being here. I'm gonna do a regular straight pour tonight. So nothing else added. I'm actually not even using white, but I have another color that I wanna use. So I was cleaning up my shelves and I realized that I have a lot of gold ochre and I don't use this color. <laughs> It's almost like a retro color for me. Um, it's a very pretty color in the bottle, but I have painted with it, tested it out, and it doesn't work so great with all colors. So I wanted to use almost like a, a muted blue color palette with it and a little bit of yellow and gold and see what I get. So yeah, I've tried it with pinks and purples and because it's that yellow tone, um, it didn't really mix well with the purples. So we're gonna see how this one goes. And I'm actually not going to use any white in the bottom. So I've done Australian Floetrol mixed with Amsterdam white most recently. And then I normally have a little bit of white to like brighten things up. But I thought I would go either with gold or with the sky blue light for the center of this one. And I'm still deciding. And I still haven't decided how I'm gonna layer the cup. So I thought I would do it in front of you so that you could see it real time. But I think I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna go for it and we'll see what colors come out. All right, let's paint. Okay, so I don't think I'm bold enough to go with this color yet. So I feel like I feel like almost like going with a dark color just right in the center, just a little bit. And then I'll come in with my sky blue. I'm gonna set those in order so that I remember them. Then maybe I like alternating light and dark. So maybe that color next. That is Amsterdam blue green. So, so far it's been Payne's gray, sky blue light, Amsterdam blue green. Ooh, do I do it now? I think I have to do it now. Ooh, yellow or gold ochre. Then I think I'll do, that, that was turquoise uh, blue. Then my yellow, that is an azo yellow uh, medium. I don't wanna do my gold right next to it because I want it to stand out. So maybe I'll do a little bit more Payne's Gray first. The way that you layer your cup in a straight pour is actually quite important for how these colors mix together. Then I think I'll do my other darker color next to the gold. Okay, I need a little bit more of the gold ochre. Oh, I didn't do my light blue. Maybe I'll do that one. Then the rest of them, I'm using it up. Using it up. Let me know if you have any other color combinations that you have used gold ochre with. So obviously I thought about like gold and copper metallics and browns, but I'm looking to use this in a different way with different colors. So let me know. All right, I think I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna go here. And you'll see it immediately if it's not a good color when it mixes. Okay, so I've used up my yellow, my gold ochre. Might as well just finish this off. I changed up my layering. Oh, well, I do like this color. So I'm gonna come back in with that. And then I think maybe I'll finish it off with some gold. The rest of the gold on the top and then whatever is on the top will be the outer rings and whatever was on the bottom is gonna be the center and will stretch out to be the focal point. And I don't want it to be too dark, so I think I'm just gonna leave the last little bit of that Payne's Gray out. I will knock that over, so I'm gonna put it over there. All right, I say let's go ahead and get started on this one, right? 
So I'm going to, I'm very anxious to see how this color combination works. Obviously, I know blues work, I know gold works, but I'm really looking for the gold ochre to see how that comes out. Oh, I love this color combination to start. Now, the blue and the gold, the blue and the yellow, they're going to create some pretty cool greens as well. So this may be a predominant green painting. And maybe I want to do a couple rings. I know I said straight pour. Now I'll go back to a straight pour. I like moving my cup a little bit. And I like keeping my design just a little bit. There we go, now it's starting to come out. I like keeping my paints a little bit thinner for these. Not as thin as my paint and water blowouts or anything like that. But I do like keeping it a little bit thinner. Just because I like the design that it gives. But you could do this with, with much thinner, I mean, thicker paint. I can't talk to you and do it. See, I dripped. You could do it with much thicker paints and you would hold a lot more of the design. All right, so what do I like and what do I not like to start? I like to do this part before I stretch it out so that it looks like it's part of the painting. I'm also going to torch before I stretch it out. So as of right now, I don't see much, and I may just pour the rest of this, why not, around this edge, just to help it glide. Am I gonna make it? Okay, all right, it's really pretty colors right now. Some of them blended to be a really beautiful green, which is super cool. My gold is along the edges and I have a feeling it will pop through a couple of cells. My center, I'm interested to see how that stretches out. I kind of want to drag that, I feel like, along in there. I may regret that, I don't know. All right, let me get my gloves. I'm not seeing much of the gold ochre right now but it could have just blended with one of the blues to make a green. So we'll see, this is like a surprise painting. All right, I'm gonna start circling on around. This one feels super heavy to me. Get to that corner. I actually, ooh, I saw something. Where did it go? I think it's right. It was not right there. Okay, that one gave me a little bit of trouble to get out of there. Going down to that edge first, making sure not to get my center off of there. Where is this? I don't want the whole center off. Twist that on around. Where is this gold ochre? I will say it made an extremely pretty green with these rings. Sometimes I miss just doing very simple techniques and just experimenting with color. I really love those lines. Okay, this one's pretty cool. I'm trying to decide if there's anything I wanna do composition-wise, and I feel like 
I do kind of want to take it further off this end here and maybe have it a little bit off center. Ooh, I like that. That gold ochre is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> okay, all right. So it mixed together with the other greens and that's okay, that's fine. I wish it had shown up though. This is a very pretty painting, very pretty green painting. I love the blue. Super interesting. And I wonder if when it dries, I'll be able to tell because I see bits and pieces of the yellow. Oh, I don't want to drip. I see bits and pieces of the yellow, but it's definitely mixed together with the blue. And I, I already know blue and yellow make green, but I thought for sure some of it would stay. So maybe the next time, if I try this again, maybe I will thicken my paints up a little bit because I like the more blended effect of the straight pour. This is a really pretty center in here. I love the kind of negative space it created there. It allows your eye to really rest on this focal point. And these lines on the outside are really beautiful. And the gold will show up as gold. I can see that. But yeah, it's these parts in here. Huh. Well, I will say that it did make a really, really pretty green. So I'm happy that there are not any greens in here that I wouldn't want to see. And I really like the color combination. All right, let me clean up my sides and my corners and then I'll show you the wet and dry result. All right, so here it is. And I actually, I really like it this way to be hung as well, but I'll have to see. But what I like about it is that, oh, I'm shaking. <laughs> what I like about it is that it has lines straight up and down this way curved lines here and then it looks like it almost twists over itself right there but i think there is some of the yellow ochre i keep saying yellow ochre gold ochre somewhere in there this little strip along here that's gold so overall, I'm really happy with the composition of this piece. Look at it twisting up there too. I like the negative space piece that's right here. So overall, I like it. I just, where's the gold ochre? <gasps> but yeah, I definitely like these twisting parts here. All right, I will show you how this one dries. These greens are just, you couldn't, couldn't get that type of green out of a bottle. It's really pretty. All right, I'll show you how this one dries. All right, I have been debating how to hang this one. And you can see the gold shining through in multiple places, which I like but really just the Payne's gray and the yellows and the blues mixed to green. So I love it when I get, so when I mix with thinner paint, I get all these, you know, small striations of lines and a kind of blended center. And I like it that way. But in order to get the colors to show up more and to get more definition, the paints need to be a little bit thicker. So I think I may do another one of these with very similar colors, but thicker paint and see what happens and see if I can get that gold ochre to show up. 
All right, well, there you go. I love the negative space on this one. It's a different composition and I like it that way. I love all the lines that are coming through. The gold is really pretty. So overall, I like it. Just lost one of my colors. <laughs> But that is just a reason to try again, right? So that's what I'll do. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Happy painting. Bye.